Hey everyone, over the years I've made uh, Solving Inequalities videos a bunch of times actually, but I I'd never really made one for one-step inequalities because I figured if you could do multi-step and two-step you could probably do one-step, but occasionally I'll get a question about it and it's people sort of overthink the process. They think it has to be something, There's some. it's too easy I think is what people think and it's really, it's not that hard, it actually is as easy as it seems it would be. Uh, I should say if you haven't seen the video on graphing inequalities, you need to watch that or someone else's video on graphing inequalities on a number line not on linear uh, not on a coordinate plane not x y axis just on a number line you should probably um, make sure that you watch that anyway let's get to it so in this setup v plus 16 is greater than or equal to 5 I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I do when I solve equations which is to draw a line down the equal sign from here I need to think okay I always put my pencil right on the variable and think what's the furthest thing away from the V on the same side of the line that's the thing I need to move so it says plus 16 well I know to get rid of plus 16 I'm gonna subtract 16 and I need to do that to both sides the more you write down and the more you talk to yourself about what you're doing and why you're doing it the easier these problems become same with any other thing um, 5 minus 16 is negative 11 now when you multiply or divide by a negative in an inequality you need to flip it over um, I have a video about why you need to flip it over so if you want to know why do you flip it over I have a video about that it's probably in the inequalities playlist and if it's not it will be soon but uh, if you multiply or divide by a negative you do need to flip the inequality so mult or divide by negative then you need to flip inequality and the basic idea is uh, based uh, based around the fact that negative doesn't mean it's not a good thing or it's a bad thing or some other nonsense it simply means that I'm gonna try to move this into the middle while I'm talking um, it simply it simply means the opposite of something so if you're thinking that east is positive then west is negative even though there's nothing inherently bad about the west but in this case we're not dividing we're just subtracting so everything's fine so V is greater than or equal to negative 11. So in order to draw this I need to go up to where negative 11 is. It's right here. Um, and the circle shows me where the boundary of uh, the inequality is. Now inequality shows a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to draw a line to indicate that all these numbers fall into a group that would make this statement true. So basically I'm saying what can I add to 16 and it's greater than or equal to 5 when I get an answer. So uh, because it's equal to, I'm going to fill in the bubble to say, hey, negative 11 is part of the answer too, because if you do negative uh, 11 plus 16, it equals 5, which is part of the answer, and then anything greater than that. So V here is next to the big end of the inequality, so you've got the big end here. Just think of it as a visual cue, kind of like the Egyptians did with hieroglyphics. This distance is a lot further than this. So the big end means it's greater than. If it's a greater end, it's greater. If it's less than, it's less. You know, what are you going to do? So I want to do drawing up this way. Now, there are situations in which some people will have you always put the x on the left side, or whatever variable, v in this case, and then just draw the way the, the arrow points. I think that's misleading, because this answer and this answer are the same thing and sometimes it's difficult to flip this over and remember to do all the parts so if you just train yourself early on to say here's the variable it's next to the big end I'm going up or you know here's the variable it's next to the little end I'm going up depending uh, thing but it looks like it's going you know the opposite direction here so you just graph it that way if you're only used to going the way the arrow points so the arrow points method is a little weak is all I'm gonna say about it in some cases. Most people can remember it, but some people can't. Anyway, here's a perfect example. Let me switch colors because I was bored of that green. 4 is greater than b over 6. Same thing. Um, b is divided by here, so I need to get rid of division, so I'm just going to multiply. Now I multiply by a positive number here, so my inequality stays exactly the same, and I'm left with b is less than 24, which means that this statement is true if I have 24, anything less than 24 divided by 6 will make a number that's less than 4 because if you have 24 divided by 6 it is 4 but they want to know what's less not what's equal to so in this case I'm gonna to go to 24 and make a circle 
And I think I point out all the steps for graphing these in the video about graphing, and I think I also bring it up again in the two-step inequality question. Um, but there's no underline. So 24 would not make this statement true. It would be equal to, but this says what's less than. So that's what I'm dealing with. Uh, so circle and leave it open if there's no line. I once had a student that said, if you have to do more work to write it, you have to do more work to graph it, which is true. If you draw the line, you fill it in, you know, but you don't here. Now, b, my variable, is next to the little end. So I'm saying b is less than, which means it goes all the way over here. So these, and on and on and on forever, represent situations in which I can plug in a number, divide it by 6, and it's less than or equal, or it's less than 4, sorry, not less than or equal to. If it was less than or equal to, I'd fill in 24 and say 24 would work as well, but it doesn't. So that's that. We'll see if I can find another one that's half decent, and then we'll be all done, I think. Actually, maybe two. This one's actually a pretty good example of one that seems like you would do one thing, but you actually do another. And you actually do an easier thing than you would think. Now, um, so in this case, it says, here's my variable right here. It's my a. So a divided by 7. And that's not a great looking A. I'm not the best at making lowercase letters, so I tend to make them uppercase almost always when I do them on my own, but I'm doing them with you here, so that would make no sense to do just what I do by myself all the time. Now, to get rid of divide by 7, I do times. My suggestion, incidentally enough, when you do inequalities, is when you do a multiplier divide, circle it. The reason is because if it is positive, you need to flip the inequality over. But you will get a negative answer in this question. Negative 19 times 7 is negative 133. But the reality is the negative was already on the 19 and it was never on the variable. The variable is sort of the star of the show. So if you don't change its sign, you don't have to worry about flipping the inequality because the relationship is still the same. So you don't flip it here. So if you just circle it, if it's negative, flip this over. If it's not, leave it like it is, which is what I'm going to do after I do a little bit of a race work through here really quickly. So like this and a is less than negative 133. Now, remember, a is next to the little end, so little means less. And where do numbers get smaller? To the left when you're doing number lines. So I'm going to go down to negative 133, make a circle, uh, leave it open because it's not equal to, and then draw the line right there. That's a simple graph, and it shows me all possible answers. And see, they flip it around, so some people will have you flip it around to over here. A is less than, but they mean the same thing. So there's no reason to go through this step, and it's really easy to flip the letter, uh, the variable and the number or the constant term around and end up with keeping this, or you just forget. So it's easier just to train yourself to get used to what the relationship is actually saying as opposed to flipping it. Now, no big deal. This is pretty simple. And basically what we're saying here is anything under negative 133 divided by 7 will give me a number that's smaller than negative 19. And that's true. So... Uh, one more, I think, if hopefully I have one that matches what I want to do. Here's one. Perfect. Negative 10 in greater than 190. Now, this here's my n value right there. I need to make sure uh, that I get rid of times negative 10. So I'm going to divide by negative 10. And that would make this negative 19. Now, if I circle it like I said to do in any divide multiply situation, I need to flip the inequality over. So this becomes what was once greater than is now less than. So my final answer is n less than negative 19. Next to the little end here. If it's next to the big end, you go up. It's not. So if you divide or multiply by negative, make sure that you flip the inequality. So here we go. We'll go to negative 19, which is right here. No reason to fill it in. It's not equal to. I want to know what I can multiply negative 10 by and have a number greater than negative 19, or negative 190. Sorry, negative. What is greater than 190? Sheesh. Um, and if I'm going to get a number bigger than a positive, I'm going to have to multiply by negative, of course. So anything less than negative 19 will make this statement true. And that's it. You can just check it to show you that it's true, and then I am all done. Yep, see? Just like that. So what this statement is really saying is any number, negative 19.1, negative 19.5, negative a million times negative 10 will give you a number that ends up being greater than 190 after you're all done. So the statement is true. You can check your answer simply by plugging it in and see if it makes any sense. So I just pick a number less than negative 19, so we'll say negative 20. So negative 10 times negative 20 
should be greater than 190. Well, negative 10 times negative 20 is 200, and that is greater than 190. And if you want to go all the way down and check negative 19, you'll end up with a statement that says 190 is greater than 190. That's if you're plugging in this, of course. And this is not true. It's not greater than, it's equal to. So you know you don't fill it in. It's just a nice way to test things. So that's it as far as this is concerned. Um, not super difficult to do, but sometimes it does seem like it should be more hard, uh, more complicated or more difficult than it is, and people sort of get freaked out by it. But that's it. Hopefully this helps.